The Mac Observer's Mac Geek Gab shows 777 for Monday, September 2nd, 2019. You don't have to be a geek to listen, but if you listen long enough, you will be. And welcome to the Mac Observer's Mac Geek Cab, the show where, like Pete says, you don't have to be a geek to listen, but if you listen long enough, you will be. It's true. Here is where we answer your questions. We share your tips. We share your cool stuff found. We share some cool things that we found. The goal, of course, being that each and every one of us learns at least five new things every single week when we get together together. Sponsors for this episode include Linode at linode.com slash MGG and Text Expander at textexpander.com slash podcast. We'll talk more about both of those shortly here. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Freeville, Connecticut, this is John Braun. And here in another part of Durham, New Hampshire, right next to Dave. Is Pilot Pete. Thanks for having me, guys. That's thanks, thanks for coming back, Pete. It's long. been too long. Yeah, yeah, man. It's good. That's good. It's good. It's good. Good to have you here. Yeah. yeah for those of you that have never heard Pilot Pete before, he uh, <laughs> was a staple on the show for many, many years. Uh, really, you came on. Um, I, I mean, sort of the, the way you pitched it was, hey, I can I can be that voice of a listener and it, in real yeah, time yeah. tell you if something is confusing yeah. and you should re-explain it. And I'm still so confused. <laughs> no, yeah, was, no uh, it's been great. It was before the chat room and everything. Yeah, so we didn't was, what, we 10? didn't have any of that real time feedback. 11, uh, 12, 12 years ago. Yeah, maybe? it's yeah. been it's, it's been a, a while. I want to say it was 07 time frame. It might have been. Yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, yeah. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Man. Yeah. So it's good yeah, to have well, you back. Our, it's been our kids were all in elementary school. Oh, so I know. You know now dude. they're doing that college no. and high school thing. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. My it's as it should be. Yeah. Like that's yeah. okay. Yeah, My no problem. At least your wallet on the college thing. Well, you know, it's okay. <laughs> easy come, easy go. That's what I always right. say. Yep. Uh and what better to th- things to spend your money on than, you know, educating another education. human. That's right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, really, it's the, like it's great. In fact, that's why we do this. That's why we spend our time doing this is to educate everybody, including ourselves. Yeah. So, yeah. Go. How are you, Mr. Braun? Things good for you today? So far. All right. <laughs> good. That's come Let's see if we can change it for you. This, this could always go off the rails. <laughs> oh, I, I think it already has. Yes, but, it has. Yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> we're doing we're doing all right so far. All right. Let's um let's see if Mike can help us. We've got a queue a few a queue. I'll queue up a few little quick tips from uh, from Mike. These are quick tips are sort of our favorite way of of sharing those things that are obvious to us but may not be obvious to everyone else. They're like those things that are, it's easy when you already know the answer. So Mike has two of them to share with us. He says, today I learned that I can screen capture video of my iOS screen. Of course, this was a feature that was introduced to iOS a little while ago, but he's totally right. And you can do it. Uh, you can actually even add it to control center. You go to settings, control center, customize, tap the plus next to screen recording, and then uh, and then you either swipe up from the bottom edge of the screen or on the iPhone 10 or later or iPad with iOS 12 or later, you swipe down from the upper right hand corner, whatever brings up control center. And then you've got the little screen recording button and you can record a little screencast on your uh, on your phone, which is great. So thank you for sharing that, Mike, because that's one of those things. If you know it, it's easy. It's not. It's a quick tip. It's what it is. He says, also, I learned that there is a sweep second hand stopwatch in the iOS clock app. And he's totally right. If you launch the clock app and hit stopwatch, you can actually if you swipe to the right, like it'll show you a digital display by default. But you'll see between the lap and start buttons are two little dots, one dot to the right, just like you have on your home screen, indicating there might be another page. Swipe right or swipe left to move it right. I don't, I never quite understood. I guess not growing up in the Tinder age of dating, I don't know which <laughs> which way swipe left is. Oh, I, I know thing. about swipe left and swipe right. I just don't know. Back on the rails, if you swipe to get to the screen to the right, you will see a stopwatch with 
a uh, with a sweepable second hand there. So thank you for sure. But you won't wind up with a date. So. But no, there's no dating involved. No one knows this is this is an Apple product. So all uh, activity is happening on device. No one knows whether you've swiped left or swiped right in the sw- stopwatch app. And if that's not the show title, I don't know what is. But anyway, <laughs> I got another iOS one. OK, I just stumbled across this by accident. And uh, maybe we've mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. So uh, if you're in Safari, um, you'll see on the bottom uh, uh, Safari on iOS, you'll see on the bottom of the screen a bunch of icons and there's a uh, back and forward icon. And I just accidentally did this. If you hold down on that, it'll bring up the history. Of where yep. the browser has been before and after. I never knew that. And it, similar on a, uh, yeah, pretty much the that. same thing on a Safari on a, on Mac OS. Yeah, it's a little more thing. obvious on Mac OS, I would say. But but I, yeah. I totally agree with you. Yeah, it, it, it's a great, I it's one that I know it's there. I don't think about it, but it's a quick tip. I mean, that's a perfect quick tip. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then there's the tabs. I have 29 open tabs on my Safari. Oh my! Do you know God. how to close them all at once? Yes. Yeah. Hold yeah, down. Hold down yeah, on whatever's in the lower right corner, and it'll yeah. say uh, close all tabs. Now, in iOS 13 betas, and so presumably in iOS 13, when you do that for the first time, mm-hmm. or if you close multiple tabs manually in a row, mm-hmm. it will pop up and give you the option. To auto close your tabs after a day, a week, a month or never or something like that. I might be wrong on the options, but there are there is a way to sort of auto expunge. That's, that's a good idea. Yeah. So yeah. That, you know. yeah. I mean, I know some people use their like their tabs as bookmarks and, and don't want to touch them, which is it. Folks, I, I get it. I understand, you know, habits and how we all do them. That one is a dangerous one only because. Apple does not see your tabs as something that need to be preserved. So there are times where you might, uh, you know, you might be doing some troubleshooting and your tabs would get blown away where, say, your reading list or your bookmarks would not. Apple sees your reading list as something that should persist. Apple sees your tabs as something that is you know uh we would say stateful right so they they they'll keep them around for you but not necessarily so just just a good warning there you go there you all go. right another quick tip grew out of that i know i know i but see this is what we do with quick tips yeah. it's good stuff all right um let's go to brad brad had a a good little question for us here that if we're not off the rails already might bring us there, but hopefully in a good way. He says, guys, have you ever done a comprehensive setup guide for a new Mac? I just bought my daughter a new MacBook Air to go off to college, and I wanted to make sure I set it up right since I won't be around to help her troubleshoot. My stable of Macs at home have been tweaked so much over time. I would really appreciate a list of the things you guys do setting up a new machine, test user accounts, T2 encryption, etc., cetera, et cetera. Thanks, as always. So I figured we would take Brad's question. We've answered this question a few times in the past. That being said, it's never bad to go back and uh, revisit something because this stuff evolves. But I figured this time uh, in, in revisiting this, we would approach it with sort of two categories of things. One that I would recommend or do for someone else's computer. And then we can mention a few of the things that are sort of personal preferences, things that we might like uh, on our own Macs. But but there, there is a distinction there. And and it, that was one of the things when we were hiring nerds at Computer Nerds down in Austin, which was a business we had before Mac Geek Gab ever existed. Um, it was kind of a geek squad sort of thing. So we had people going to people's homes and offices. And the hardest part, you could get a really smart nerd. But if they were insistent upon setting up and tweaking clients' computers to have all the little bells and whistles that they would have on their own computers, that would result in more customer service phone calls after the visit than anything else we ever did. So it was like, yep, that's great for you. Please don't push this stuff on your clients. Offer, advise, and then stop and listen. And when the client tells you yes or no, follow their advice or follow their instruction. You've already advised them. Your value has been added to the equation. Now you are there to do the, the work that the client wants done. Anyway, uh, so we are separating those two for this, which is a good thing. One of the first things I would do on anyone's Mac, especially in this scenario, Brad, where you are likely going to be called upon to troubleshoot it 
um, or to assist in the troubleshooting over the phone is I would get Onyx installed on there. That is, um, it, it, it's just a great sort of all in one utility. We mention it here all the time. It can do lots of the things, perhaps even all of the things that we might want to do to troubleshoot a problem. Uh, so having that pre-installed on the system might make your life a little easier instead of having to walk someone through, you know, a, um, uh, you know, downloading it and all of that stuff. So Onyx is one thing I would, uh, I would, I would start with. And honestly, the second one would be malware bytes. Uh, having something to search for malware on there would be uh, great. And you can, you can run it in free mode. That's fine. You don't necessarily need its scheduler. Um, but if you want to pay, I think it's like 15 bucks or something for a, a, at least a year or something of the schedule. So you could certainly do that, but, but even just having it there to run through, um, I would set up time machine on it and send her to school with some sort of backup drive. Um, I would, as you suggested, Brad, I would create a test user account. If only just to have, you know, you can set it to auto log into her user account. Doesn't need to be you know, present and obvious all the time, but having that test user account set up sort of in the background, make sure it's an admin account, make sure you both know the password. Don't forget it. Uh, having that set up there can make troubleshooting easier down the road. And for a machine like that, uh, I would buy Apple care plus it's going off to school. It, you know, you get the damage, uh, involvement with Apple care plus plus, you know, the extended warranty that makes life easier if she's walking into an, you know, Apple store or somewhere else, et cetera, et cetera. So those are kind of the universal things that I would do. John, what do you, what do you have on your universal list? Um, I'm going to toss a few in here. So one, um, you mentioned, you know, if you have to remotely help someone diagnose problems, uh, team viewer, I think it's great for that. Yeah. Okay. I've had, or you could, or I suppose you could use, uh, I mean, you can do screen sharing with messages. So that's, that's another option, right? That, yeah, that's, you're, you're right. I would here. my problem with team viewer is that after a certain amount of something, it decides that you are doing this for pay and that you, it will lock you out of the app unless you pay there for their, their I mean, the price of team viewer for what you actually get with team viewer is is fair i suppose i mean they get to decide their price so of course it's fair uh but it's it's not it's not cheap it's like 50 bucks a month or something so for using it you know for family and friends kind of thing it 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 like maybe that maybe it's not worth it if you're if you're supporting clients 50 bucks a month is easy money to spend if you're supporting family and friends for free it just stings a little bit to spend that 50 a month when, like you said, yeah, messages with its screen sharing is actually way yeah, better. Right. I've found I it. still use it when my parents are having a problem mm -hmm. and I use it infrequently enough where they, they haven't. Get yeah, I, 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 I encourage you to try the next time you have a problem. Try it with messages, man. It's so I think you and I did it with something once. And I mean, it's just so easy. It I frankly, it, it works way better than TeamViewer because you don't have to install additional software, right? You're not you're not imposing that upon the person that you're helping. It's just like, yep, let's get a messages thing going and then I'll ask and you can, you know, they have to approve you, of course, all that stuff. So but yeah. All right. Any other sort um, of sort of table stakes kind of stuff? Uh, password manager. Ooh, you took mine. <sighs> So again, this is what I think. Or you could use iCloud Keychain, but that, I, I like LastPass. I think you like one password, but, um, but some that, see, this, form this of now, password manager. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Teaching. I would, but I would set up the built-in one again. This is where yeah. that, that imposing my preferences on you thing, I think kicks in. There is a perfectly adequate password manager built into Mac OS. Yeah. I would not. I would not add one. I, you, you know, if someone says, well, I'm doing these other things, you might advise them, hey, you might really like one password or something. And and if they want that, great. But I would not I would not install that by default on everyone's machine. There was a day where I would, and that was before iCloud right. Keychain existed. Yeah. Does Keychain right. does Keychain sync well with, oh, between the it iOS argu and arguably oh. syncs better. I mean, now okay. with iOS twelve, yeah. Password managers are all sort of given equal footing. Okay. Right. But prior to iOS 12, iCloud Keychain was was the the really the only functional way 
okay. to have a password manager sync to iOS because because you okay. couldn't put extensions in Safari prior to iOS. All right, I'm, 12. I'm just oh, right. covering the topic. Okay. okay. Um, another one, some form of cloud storage, whether it be Dropbox or OneDrive, whatever, or you could use again iCloud. Again, right. So so again, two things here. Uh, you're right, some kind of cloud storage, but I would do iCloud Drive stick in the Apple ecosystem, right? Also, she's going off to school, so she very likely will get, you know, some monster amount of storage via the school. Most schools now are giving kids. It's not Dropbox. It's usually Box.com or, or Microsoft's mm -hmm. OneDrive. Uh, but yeah, again, I wouldn't install. I wouldn't impose a third party thing on him unless you absolutely have to. But like you said, with this, you've got iCloud and you can I mean, storage is expensive with iCloud. So maybe it does make sense to to go with, you know, right. something else. Um, yep. All right. Um, something to make a clone with. I don't think Apple's tools are sufficient. So carbon copy cloner. Yeah. Super duper are that, the two that yeah. uh, most two, people yeah. like. I'll give you I'll give you that as table stakes. Yeah. It, having a clone of the machine it, when things when everything hits the fan is. Yeah, that that's table stakes. I'll, I'll give you that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. For sure. All right. Um, in addition to malware bytes, um, I would suggest uh, it's not as much of a problem on the uh, on the Mac as it is on the PC. But uh, antivirus like Clam X A V, I like because I've actually had it step in like sometimes, you know, I'll get something that's obviously meant to infect me and they do a good job of blocking that. You know, like I got an invoice the other day at my Mac observer email and they're like, here's your invoice for whatever. And I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> it was an infected uh, document. Sure. Um, and for diagnostics. Well, hey, hang on. Are we, are, it sounds like right. we're, we're tipping into that personal preference realm. So, Pete, what do you did well, you have something on yeah. the table stakes side of yeah. things? The universal right. advice? Yeah. I, I think arguably. It, yes. Which is set app. Huh? Because it offers so many a, a wide variety of utilities. Now, it is subscription. Right. And it's, I think it's nine ninety five a month. It's, yeah. Ten bucks a month or, yeah. or somewhere there. But yep. it offers, you know, from Mac cleaner and a mail client and so many utilities that that bound to be two or three in there that you're going to use that are. That are key again. D d essential. Yeah, <laughs> no, you can get by without it. But yeah. boy, there's some really nice things in there. That's an that, interesting one. Yeah. Does that become is that? I, yeah, I, I would put that I would put that as a very high priority on the next on the, on the next not, list, not yeah, yeah, but it it like it's so it's close though, yeah. right? I mean, it's you know, you know it's, it's not as important as a clone, no. right? Right, but no. but but will potentially save someone a lot of money sure. down the road. Yeah, yeah, it's got things you know, Mac hacks like bartender and that sort of thing, and clean my Mac, which I think is some people have had. A, Oh. Bad experiences I've heard with. Oh that. no, Clean My Mac's been great for I me. I love Clean My Mac. Yep, it cleans same. out gigabytes of junk. Same. Um, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, and that would be another one to yeah. to you know to put on that. Yeah. Uh, Boom yeah. 3D's in there, which is a sound enhancer uh -huh. for your laptop. Uh -huh. you know, uh, uh, Canary Mail, I haven't tried yet. But yeah, I, yeah. I, you know. No, um, they 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 curate that list very well. Yeah. It's true. That's true. You know. All right. So tipping into the personal preference realm, we've we've kind of hit a few of those, I think, already um, for a college computer. I wouldn't recommend this because she will probably get a subscription to Microsoft Office from the school. But if you don't have, have a subscription to Office and you are living in a world where you might need to deal with Word and Excel documents on a semi regular basis, certainly pages and numbers can do that. But I find that LibreOffice is a much better experience. It is it is certainly the best of the open office clones for the Mac. And uh, it's freely available. It will open and natively deal with Word and Excel documents. So you're not having to do like a save as like you always are with pages and dealing with a conversion from, you know, Word or Excel to pages or numbers and then back this is natively dealing with Word and Excel documents uh, without paying for Microsoft Office. So I, I highly recommend that if she wouldn't naturally have Microsoft Office, that would that would definitely be one. Uh, you know, I, I like Bartender uh, to manage my menu bar. I personally, I wind up installing a lot of crap in my menu bar and I only need some of it to appear 
all of the time and then and bartender sort of lets you pick and choose uh what appears all the time versus what only appears when you want it to appear uh and then uh you know, it, it, right along those lines is iStat menus. I like to see what's going on with my Mac. I realize that we're geeks here at Mac Geek Gab, and so maybe not everybody wants that stuff. But uh, but I like it, and maybe it that, because I like iStat menus so much, perhaps that's my reason for needing Bartender to keep my menu bar clear. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, there you go. So those those would be those would be three of mine. Sort of that might be you know not they're not universal, but might be applicable to lots of people what else you got mr braun uh a couple for uh general troubleshooting okay um hardware growler i like it'll tell you when discs mount yeah discs dismount uh devices connect devices disconnect um and the one thing i find interesting with it is it, it'll show you when secret updates are happening because certain programs like Dropbox and others, they'll kind of in the background do something without really telling you that they are. Yep. Okay. So, uh, and the uh, Dubuki tools to uh, tell you what's happening with your wireless. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. What else you got, Pete? I mean, I know we've, like um, I said, I know we've sort of di already tipped yeah. our toes in this water, but anything left? Um. No, that's I was going to say like something like screen sharing menu lit, but you can do that through messages. Now, yeah, I guess. right. So, yeah. Right. Um, as uh, as Brian Monroe in our chat room at MacGeekGab.com slash stream says, uh, in his opinion, and Brian is a, a revered and respected consultant throughout the Bay Area in San Francisco. He says it's much better to keep it clean to start and then add in any of these third party solutions later. And I, I think that is that is sage advice. Stick with the basics that you can get by with and and maybe just you know it, it, i mean in the case of your daughter you, you know you're living with her until she goes off to school so you can sort of have these conversations naturally if you are a, a consultant or advising someone you can sort of you know give them the 30 second rundown of hey here's some other things that we could add down the road if you're interested that sort of thing so yeah thank you brad oh and actually there was one that was thrown in uh by someone in the chat room, I'm not sure who, but it's called uh, it's a book called This is the Light Side, the Mac Edition by Edward Eisen. Uh, it's available on Apple Books, so you don't need any third party stuff. It's ninety nine cents and it looks to be uh, it, it's sort of a, a book to get started with the Mac. Uh, a must read for Mac new for new Mac owners is what one of the reviews says. So there you go. Maybe that's a maybe that's a nice way to kind of let somebody do some self exploration uh, with that sort of thing. Thank you. It was Brian Monroe that tossed that in. So thank you very much. Good stuff. We will put it in the show notes. In fact, it's already there. So Coolio. All right, uh, John, you had a question on Twitter, and I am going to talk about our first sponsor first, and then okay. we'll go to your Twitter thing. But the, our first sponsor is as i mentioned text expander that would also be an app that for me i would put uh on a mac when installing and i would highly encourage others to do the same because text expander saves me so much time i'm a i'm an efficiency maniac i'm an impatient person and i'm obsessed with getting things accurate those three things generally don't go too well together but with text expander, they go perfectly together because all of those things that you write over and over again, those things, you know that you've done this. You go into your sent mailbox to look for something that you wrote to the last person that asked you a similar question. Right. And you're digging through your sent box. You're like, oh, cool. I found it. Copy, paste. Now you got to remove all of the the forwarding that wants to be there because it's invariably it's baked in and you've got some weird, you know, formatting and all that stuff. And then you got to go through and, you know, change it because you might have, you know, written somebody's name in there. And that is a tedious process. And then when you're finished, you got to read it again because you got to make sure you got it right for this person. Well, here's the deal. You write it once. You put it into text expander. You proofread it there. You make sure it's exactly what you want. You can tweak it over time. And now when that question is asked, boom, you put it in there. I have directions to my house in text expander. I've got like my address. I've got my phone number. I have customer service responses for the businesses. I've got sales inquiry responses for the businesses. 
They're all just right there in Text Expander, and I can invoke them and send them from any of my devices without ever proofreading. This is amazing. When somebody asks, hey, I want in information on this, I, I can do this even on my phone because Text Expander has a keyboard. I just invoke it, and boom, the response is there. I hit send. I don't have to read it because I know it's right. This is what you want. And because you're a listener to this show, you get 20% off your first year. Visit TextExpander.com slash podcast to learn more. Our thanks to TextExpander at TextExpander.com slash podcast for sponsoring this episode. All right, Mr. Braun, on to you. All right. So I got a tweet from my buddy uh, Todd McCann, who uh, uh, one thing he does He's kind of like Pilot Pete, but instead of being a pilot, he's a trucker. And he does a podcast called Trucker Dump. So you may want to check that out if you want to learn about trucking. But anyways, he tweeted me a question. Can a virus slash malware in Windows running a boot camp or parallels infect the Mac OS side? The opinions I'm seeing online seem to be all over the map. So I broke out the Google Foo and um, he actually complimented me on my mad skills, but um, I went to the parallel support forms and someone asked the question pretty much to that effect. And um, the answer from parallel support is that if sharing is enabled, so this is a feature within parallels. I'm not sure about bootcamp, Dave, maybe you could shed okay. some light on that once I'm done here. But anyways, so their answer is if sharing is enabled, then your Mac files are visible from the windows side. And if it's visible, it can be accessed by Windows applications, including malware. Unfortunately, if you isolate Windows, then application sharing will not work. You need to have an anti-malware on the Windows side for better protection. So that's that's the answer. Yeah. And the same would be true with um, with boot camp, because if your Mac files are available to any piece of software that's running, it is susceptible to whatever that software can do. Now, Apple does it. And just like with parallels, like full disk access uh, security can help here, right? Because unless you give parallels full disk access, it can't see all of the files on your Mac. So, or it, and it certainly can't write to them. So there might be some security protections. Uh, this was, you know, this, parallels thread i think was like a year old right and so maybe doesn't reflect what mojave can do in this regard because that you know level of security has increased i haven't i haven't messed with parallels in in this capacity with mojave to see like what exactly it can do but but uh but assume yes if you're running windows in any capacity i would run antivirus software for sure Long before you would feel the need to run it on the Mac. I don't, I run anti malware stuff, as I mentioned earlier. I don't run antivirus software. Thus far, I have not regretted that decision. The day may come when I do. That's fine. Thus far, I have not. On every Windows machine I have, I run antivirus software. Ta that's table stakes. So, oh, yeah. Okay. And on both my VMs and um, on the Mac side, I, I run Clam AV because. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Again, not as much of a threat, um, though I like running it every now, especially, uh, yes, yeah, so it'll find like email with the, it'll get to the point of like finding email with weird HTML stuff happening in it. Yep. Yep. All so, right. Cool. Cool. The answer. There's Thanks, the answer. God. That's great. No, it's good. I like this. This is good. We're staying on the rails. It's amazing. I don't, I don't know how long we will I stay can fix here. That. Thanks for coming, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right we have some tips from previous episodes starting with uh, one from listener john uh who caught something which is awesome in the last episode we said that you could you could set a fixed amount of minimum payment when with this is talking about the apple card and i was saying how i like with all of my credit cards i just go in and i configure every one of them to do an auto payment of the minimum payment five days before the payment date. Nine times out of 10, maybe even more often than that, I get there in time. I process my monthly bills in time to, you know, pay everything off or do whatever I'm going to do, whether I'm, if I'm going to carry a balance, like, you know, there's some intent 
But if I miss it because I'm traveling or busy or whatever, I want to make sure I don't have a late payment. So I just go in and set them all to minimum with Apple Card. It did not seem I did not see that that was possible. Thankfully, listener John to the rescue, he says, uh, not five minutes ago, I set up my Apple Card to monthly play the monthly pay the minimum. I like you. I like doing that just in case I forget to pay, which is unlikely. And it's very easy to do. You go in, you set up a payment, go into the fixed amount choice and using the slider or the scroller slide all the way down to the smallest payment, which now says it just has it doesn't have a dollar amount. It has the word minimum. Now I'm covered just in case for some odd reason I don't pay off the balance ahead of time. Perfect. And I, it, he's totally right. I did this. It, it, it takes all of about four seconds. And now I'm covered on the 31st of every month or the, the whatever, whatever day it's due, it will pay my minimum if I haven't taken care of that already, which is great. Arguably even better than most of my cards, which will auto pay the minimum. Even if I've queued up a payment for the entire amount, it like overpays me by the minimum, which is fine. It just rolls forward to the next month. It's no big deal for, for the way I do things here. But yeah, John, yeah. you found and something it, about the Apple card too. Well, it looks like they fixed a uh, transient. So the end of the month is an exciting time for the Apple card because that's when what I'll call your statement closing date is. Sure. So, um, and until that point, you know, I wanted to schedule my payment um, today um, or September 1st. So, you know, one in the morning, I check out the screen and it's like, yep, thanks for scheduling your payment. And I'm like, um, I didn't schedule a payment. So um, I went into the app, called them up because what else are you going to do at one in the morning? Sure. And uh, of course they're there 24 seven. And I right. spoke to someone and and she was, and I'm like, yeah, what's, um, you know, what's going on here? <laughs> she's like, yeah, hold on. Uh, I'll be right back. And she's like, uh, yeah, there's, there's a, a bug. Like, oh, um, interesting. You know, we, uh, there's some issue with the, with the UI or um, so ignore that message. And um you know, just hang on and, you know, try tomorrow morning when you wake up. And uh, sure enough, about um, five in the morning, I got an email from Apple Card support saying, hey, your statement's ready. Nice. And uh, now if I look uh, where it asks for the payment, it's like, yep, your payment's due September 30th, which it should be for most of us. Huh. Um, Interesting. Interesting. And I've tied in the account that I use to pay all my other bills. So I'm going to schedule that. Uh, so I'm going to schedule that soon. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun. All right. And you noticed something. I don't, I don't know if you want to. You, you, you had a chat with them about, did they resolve your issue? What was my issue? You're right. I, I remember texting you something about a chat I had with them. Uh, they they were, it, it, I don't know. I had to ask them something. And uh, and they immediately said, we will, uh, we will put you on with Goldman Sachs. But unlike... I've heard some other people who have said, like, who have asked, am I on with Apple or am I on with Goldman Sachs? And, you know, the answer was this very sort of nebulous, I'm on the Apple card team. It's like, yeah, but what company do you work for? Uh, now they I did that. <laughs> you, it was you. OK, I thought it was a, you. Just just to be a pain. I, yeah. I was like, are you an Apple employee or a Goldman Sachs employee? No, they, they were they kind said, of evasive. Well, I, yes, yes, I, we are. <laughs> yeah, I, I had asked a question. I had. Oh, and this is actually a good little quick tip for everybody. You know, John, you had said that Uber uh, gives you 3%. Mm -hmm. And so I put my Apple card into Uber and I only got 1%. And so I wanted to ask. And the first thing they said to me was, I can help with that, but let me connect you with an Apple card specialist at Goldman Sachs. So they were very clear about this transmit transition was going to happen. And they explained to me that you only get the Uber 3% benefit. If you use Apple pay via Uber, which I've always found to be a bit of a clunky experience because at the moment that I'm trying to request an Uber, now I'm doing an Apple pay um, face ID disaster, which is, I mean, look, it's all fine. But when you're in the moment, you're trying to get this car, you, you know, you're standing on the curb of an airport. It's like, I don't want to do that. And, and I've, I've been there before. So when, when I heard you could do this with your Apple card, I just put the number of my Apple card directly into the Uber app. So that I would be sure. So I could just uh, default. Good. OK, this is great. I get off. I request like there's no extra friction in the process because I've already put my card in. Well, 
Turns out when you do it that way, you only get 1%, as you all, as you do with everything where the card number is used. So for Uber to work with Apple Pay, you got to go through For Uber to work with 3% bonus, you've got to go through Apple Pay. And so that's the price to pay. So, okay, good to know. Right. FYI. Yep. Right. Another thing I noticed is that, so they mentioned the 3% for Apple stuff. That's yeah. only if you buy it from Apple. Right. You had mentioned that last, last episode. That's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and and probably only if you use Apple Pay. I think all of those bonuses, sort of the 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 gateway to them is paying with Apple Pay, not just using your Apple Card. Clearly, right. But, you know, I'll tell you though, if you do the math, you save thirty cents on a fifteen dollar Uber fee. Right. So it's just not worth it's it. It's just, no, it's not worth the headache. <laughs> no, no. Take the 1% vice the three. Yeah. Correct. Well, okay. I, really, it's better for me if I just go back to using my, my hotel points card and, and mound them up yeah. there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah. it's a better, it's a better deal in the end. Yep. And this was actually somebody else was paying the, the Uber. I was just paying the tip. So it was oh, more just yeah. to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. All anyway. right. So they're, uh, they're evolving. They're, yes, uh, of course. Yeah. They're doing good. I'm, yeah. It's I'm fine. Happy. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's like I, the original Apple Maps, you know, the, the icon showed the car driving off the bridge. Yeah, you know? it That's did. gone now. They're evolving. They're we'll evolving. Get it's getting better. <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, Ed has a tip. He says, I wanted to respond to episode 775, where you talked about not worrying about encrypting a desktop hard drive versus a laptop device. Because you're not taking the desktop with you. That was that was my argument for not adding encryption necessarily, whereas on a laptop, I always would. Right, this one situation that I was thinking of is if you ever need to take your desktop Mac in for repair or service, if you haven't yet encrypted your drive beforehand, you're pretty much handing over everything unencrypted during that time to get your machine repaired. While it might not be a common scenario at that point, it may well be too late to go back and enable file vault on a non-functioning desktop Mac when you're in the scenario of having to take it in for repairs. And you're totally right, Edmund. Uh, absolutely. This is like no question that that's a, that's great advice. What's it? What? And so, so, you know, factor that in, will I start encrypting all my desktops? Uh, maybe, honestly, maybe that's not a bad point. Um, file vault is so seamless. It's it, that's the thing is like, why it's not? So good. Yeah. Well, so here's the thing though. Um, I am not ready to give my full review, so I'm not even going to, uh, begin that part. But earlier this week I got only for as a loner, I have to send it back. Uh, a, one of the new MacBook pro, the, the lower end units, but they, that they revved this spring mm -hmm. that has the, uh, it's got the four core i5 in it and it's, you know, it's only $200 more than the MacBook air and it's got the touch bar. And so I started thinking, wow, if I had this decision to make over again, you know, the one that I made in December, do I, you know, I need a new Mac laptop. It doesn't need to be my, my daily driver. Which one do I get? And I was sort of deciding between the air and the pro at the time, the air was the obvious choice. Mm -hmm. Now with this rev, for just two hundred dollars, yes, it's twenty percent more, but it's only two hundred bucks. You know, you get per perhaps double the processor. Does it make a difference? So it is under that umbrella that that I reached out to Apple and they they provided us with a review unit to mess with. I'll leave it at that. I, I don't want to answer the question yet um, because there's a couple other tests that I need to do. But I figured I had an opportunity here because my MacBook Air, even though it's only six months old, suffers from the double keystroke issue uh, on the butterfly keyboard, which I think they all will eventually. So I thought, well, perfect. I'll send it in. So I got online with Apple and they sent me a box to ship it to the depot to take care of this. And I after reading Ed's thing, I was earlier this week, I was like, well, um. You know, I cloned this over, I cloned my air over with migration assistant over to the, um, to the MacBook pro so that I could truly have an apples to apples, no pun intended comparison. Great. No problem. Uh, that was easy. I have the same installation over there, but when the air comes back, I'm going to clone back to it. I'm not going to just go with what it had and right. deal with, you know, re updating whatever updates I did on this pro. And I thought, well, then I should just wipe the drive before I send it in. Because I'm going to wipe it sure. when it comes back. Might as well do it now. No problem. 
command R to get into recovery mode, which I am certain I've done before because that is how I turned off the, the external boot drive limitation. And let me tell you in advance, I'm really glad I turned that off because command R would not launch recovery mode on that computer. Mm. Now that it's, they say yeah. that maybe because of the keyboard doing its repeat magic, yeah. possibly sure. Uh, but internet recovery won't work on it either. Now I I've only spent about 30 minutes fighting this particular battle so far because I'm tempted to just send it in and tell Apple while you have it, wipe the drive, please. There's a, there's another problem that you now have to fix, Yeah. but it's awfully disconcerting that I like, I hold down command R and it says starting internet recovery. This might take a while. And then it goes all the way through. And I think I get an error negative 9,004 F or something in the end. Oh, oh yeah. Well, uh, it's like, dude, yeah. with, with a link to Apple support or something. Right. So I don't, I don't know how far I'm going to beat on this because one way or another on Tuesday, I'm shipping this, um, you know, this box is going to FedEx. So, um, yeah, how, yeah. Much, how much of your personal time is this worth? Correct. Becomes, well, yeah. it's, you know, oh. can I, like, this is a troubleshooting thing. So at some level it's, you know, it's good for the show for me to have experience with this, but yeah, but but I, I feel well, like I'm beating my head against the wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At some point. I guess but, I'm uh, going to try booting from a USB stick. There you hmm. go. Okay. Uh, you know, be, but yeah. the only reason I can do that is because in the past I went into the, the, and I can't even remember the name of it now, but the, the little utility that's only available in recovery mode and created lets you change bootable. the default. No, you, the, by default oh. on all the T2 max, you cannot boot from an external device. Because that's a security risk. I turned that off because I knew as a troubleshooting measure, I was willing to accept that security risk sure. in exchange for the ability to boot from uh, an external uh, disk. Wow. Yeah. The, so right. Brian Monroe in the chat room is saying he got the same error at a client's place. Cool. I'm glad to know I'm hmm. not alone. So that's good. Yeah. Go ahead. John. All I'll say is whenever a drive gets out of my control, I erase it. Well, that's Whether what I'm trying to do here. Yeah. 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 I know. No Even bueno. drives that have failed. So our town uh, will accept electronics for, uh, they claim it's recycling, but uh, whenever I have a drive, even if it's a drive that has like bad blocks and stuff, I'll do a secure erase, at least for a rotational drive. And then for an SSD, I guess, yeah, you would just do an erase. Yeah. After previously enabling. Yeah. That's a, huh. I know oh, War I Warren learned. in the chat room reminded me reminded us that that is called the secure boot manager and is accessible from recovery mode. So, um, again, I'm really glad I did this, man. It's just frustrating. Like, yeah. Um, so, okay. Yeah. Brian Monroe said he ran into the same thing. He said, but, um, the computer was going to e-waste. So, uh, it didn't really matter. So there you go. Okay. Mine hopefully is not going to e-waste, but maybe Apple will decide to replace the SSD and all of this is moot. It will come back blank anyway, yeah, right. which is also fine. They did ask me, do you have a backup? And I was like, of course they said, I, we would have expected nothing less from you, Mr. Hamilton. I'm like, well, you know, it's kind of how I roll. You know, I can't imagine though in this day and age still, how yeah. many people have unencrypted drives going to e-waste and, uh, many years ago, I had a friend in Miami area who bought used computers from yeah, companies. Sure. He said the amount of data on there, he goes, thank God for them. I'm an honest person. Right. That, oh. You know, the, the data that gets left on there from for personal sure. and corporate secrets. That, yep. Yeah. Well, here's, here's another one. A friend of mine recently had this happen. Um, not only your drives should you uh, secure or erase. Um. A friend of mine started getting uh, bills from a credit card he never applied for. And my guess is that he uh, disposed of uh, a credit card offer, but did not shred it. So shred your paper and mail for anything that has to do with finances, folks. Can I offer a quick tip there? Uh, yeah, sure. It used to cost money. It's free now. Yes. Freeze your credit. Just freeze your credit. Yep. And you can unfreeze it as needed with a pin. Right, right. I, all my credit is frozen anymore. Yep. It just, no one can get a, so you just you do it, get you do it online direct you do it with, online the, with Equifax, e, uh, uh, Experian yep. and 
Well, the, what, other the other one. With TransUnion. TransUnion. Right? Yeah. Okay. There's so, actually a fourth one out there now, which still isn't big enough to be a problem, I don't think. But uh, yeah, it used to cost $10 to freeze it, $10 to unfreeze it unless you were a victim. The law changed this year. It's free to uh, freeze it. It's free to unfreeze it. You can unfreeze it temporarily if you're going to get a car loan or a new credit card, something like that. Right. But else, if someone sends you a offer in the mail and you throw it away and someone decides to fill it out, it can't get a card in your name because they won't approve credit without running a check. Right. We will, um, yeah. we will put <clears throat> links because this is all, as Pete points out, this is, you are able to do this for free. Um, we will find and put links to yeah, let me see if the, I can, the, I see these see in the in the show out. notes. Yeah, we will get those out before the show goes out. Just just so that it, you have an easy place to go. And of course, if you want to get the show, you can always find the show notes at MacGeekGab.com. No problem. You just choose the episode. They're right there. If you want the show notes to be delivered, hand delivered, well, sort of to you via email every week in your inbox so you don't have to think about going to get them and then you can just get all the links that we do here go visit macgeekgab.com and sign in i realize this is a little bit of chicken and egg you've got to remember to go to macgeekgab.com to sign up so that you don't have to go to macgeekgab.com to get the show notes later but trust me that one trip will save you because now you get links to all of that we've got some cool stuff found showing up here and uh you know, so uh, you'll want links to all of that good stuff. And this is how we get there. Cool. Yeah, and it kind of varies. Uh, the, the Apple card, actually, if you bring it up, has a uh, option to lock the card. Um, yes. But not all cards offer that through wallet. I think some do through their apps also. So sure. That's another thing. Sure. If you think your card's been compromised or you lose your physical yep. card. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We'll circle break crazy. briefly with one other thing, though. Use something like one password, last pass, iCloud keychain to keep your pin. It's very difficult to unfreeze your report without your pin. Yes. Oh. Yes. That is true. Yes. Yeah. You without know, like, that pin, like, you're yeah, done. Yeah. yeah. Without, it's kind of like your uh, key to your, your uh, file vault. If you lose your right. password, if you've got that key, you can un unencrypt. Yep. 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 Cool. All right. Uh, great. Moving on. Actually, we, I, as I mentioned, we have a ton of cool stuff found to go with. I want to take a minute before we do that and talk about Linode at L I N O D E dot com slash M G G, which is our next sponsor here. Linode is offering you $20 Mac geek Cab listener. That's all you need to be. Go to Linode.com slash M G G promo code M G G two zero one nine. That gets you $20 of credit. Linode is the place where you can go to spin up a server and you can have a server spinned up, spun up, spinned up, spun up. Before I finish talking about this, it goes so, so quickly. And here's the cool part. You can spin up a server that just gets you to a command line if that's your thing. And that's totally fine. Like, that's great. But also, if you just want to spin up a server that, say, has WordPress, you know, that's what you're going to use it for. They their cloud manager there lets you spin that up and you don't ever have to see the command line. You don't ever have to install PHP or MySQL or WordPress or any of it. They take care of that for you because they've got these auto configuration things. You'd still be done before I finished the ad read. Like it's, it's that fast. It's that convenient. And it's not just WordPress. You can set up a VPN. You can set up a Minecraft server. There's, there's tons of these things that they've pre configured for you. A hundred percent of their servers featured native SSD storage. This makes them fast. Even the low end one is super fast because it's on these fast SSDs. And I mentioned the low end one it starts at just five bucks a month for their nanode, which is their lowest cost server. That means you could get four months for free because I just told you how to get $20 credit. So go get your $20 credit. Go to Linode, L I N O D E dot com slash M G G use promo code M G G two zero one nine for 20 bucks. Our thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. Okay, now it is time to talk about some cool stuff found. And we will do uh, Felipe first. Felipe says, if I can find, where is that app that I put all this? Where did it happen to Evernote? Oh, the icon changed. I'm still looking for a green icon and it's a white icon. So anyway, uh, Felipe says... 
I'm not sure if. Oh, yeah. We were talking in last episode about. Um, listener Mike was look. Or sorry, listener Matt was looking for a way to have his clipboard manager act like a stack. Right. Where it, it when you when you pop things off of it, they were removed. And so Felipe found something close. He says, I, an app I've used in the past called Copy Paste Pro by Plum Amazing has a feature called Clip Revolver that pastes, deletes and moves on to the next one, as well as some other features that might bring back some of the functionality that listener Matt was looking for. He says, I've switched since uh and i'm using paste bot which also has sequential paste feature which i have had the occasion to use so thank you for uh thank you for that that that's great felipe maybe that maybe that does solve it for matter at least gets him a little bit closer than he was prior all right um ralph oh this is great it's not just ralph it's ralph and will and so many of you chimed in uh we were talking about mike's problem last week where he had a, a person he was supporting that wants to run windows but wants the boot manager to come up every single time and uh he mentioned an app called refit which is no longer being maintained well roderick smith created refined boot manager at rodsbooks.com slash refined of course we'll put a link in the show notes it's the spiritual successor, as Ralph says it, uh, to refit and works wonderfully. He says, I use it to boot regularly into OS 10, Windows 10, Arch Linux, and Ubuntu. It's highly configurable, but after installation, it automatically scans which OSs you have on your various partitions, thumb drives, and or CVD, CD, DVD drives, and presents a menu upon reboot uh, that shows your installed operating systems. You can fig you can configure it to boot by to one of them by default or to just give you the menu so i think that's the answer so many of you wrote in with this thank you thank you thank you this is great this is what i love about doing this show it really is the interaction is what keeps us going so yeah very cool um any thoughts on any of this before we uh before we move on no okay uh, we talked about Allison's uh, potentially thermal issues or uh, she was having or is having, I guess, issues where her CPU slows down. She's written a big, long blog post about it, which we will put out there. In fact, I recorded a segment with her to play into this week's episode, and it was about halfway through her adventures. Uh, and she realized that it was all wrong. Uh, the, the solution she had at the moment, the working theory turned out to be uh, unprovable and unrepeatable. So. Uh, so she moved on and and there's other stuff. So we'll link to her blog post about it. But uh, in a general sense, listener Javier says I was listening and uh, he says, I may have an answer. I've watched many, many videos on YouTube where they compare the processor speed and other benchmarks of a CPU in a given Mac versus other machines running with the exact same CPU. The consensus among many of these experts is that most Macs suffer suffer from a poor thermal curve for two reasons. One, the quest to make Max ever slimmer means less space for cooling. Second, apparently, the quality of the thermal paste Apple applies to their Max in the factory. Uh, a YouTuber called Quinn actually did a teardown of a 2018 Mac Mini and found that the CPU would thermal throttle itself very quickly, ramping down to a lower clock speed just a couple of minutes after reaching full load. But after he replaced the thermal paste on the CPU, something that is not for the faint of heart, uh, Javier says, uh, with Arctic Silver, which is evidently some super hoopty uh, thermal paste, it allowed the Mini to reach maximum clock speed and stay there pretty much indefinitely during all of his tests. This was interesting to me because I own precisely this computer and have been toying with the idea of performing this very particular hack. I hope this helps. Thanks, Javier. Yeah, that's it, it, very interesting. I think Allison's problem is battery related, uh, as it turns out. But but until she gets the battery replaced, we won't really know for sure. So her trials continue. But uh, thank you for the discussion, Javier. That's great. Awesome. Cool. Fun. It's always fun. Thoughts, John? Well, to continue this discussion, um, I'll bring up another option here and speaking of the interaction dave i actually uh po 
posted a link to this in uh, in our forums, which cool. you can find at uh, gosh, where is that? www.macgeekapp.com slash forms. That's that'll get you there. Yeah, we've got we've got all the redirects you ever would need, and that's one mm-hmm. of them. Yep. So yeah, I haven't heard back. Um, I, I posted in the thread, and I, I don't know if Allison's tried this or not, but uh, my thought process was: I wonder if Turbo Boost is disabled for whatever bizarre reason on her machine. Sure. Because you can disable it. Uh, on the PC, it's a little more straightforward in that you typically go into the BIOS, and uh, you know, which lets you configure various aspects of the machine. And on a lot of PCs, you can say, uh, I don't want to have Turbo Boost. Now, why you wouldn't want to is another question. I mean, well, you know, I mean, battery life, uh, temperature. Um, yep. So I did a, did a little surfing, and I found something, Dave, called Turbo Boost Switcher which does exactly what it says it does, is that it can disable turbo boost. And it also has tools that will show CPU load, temperature, fans, battery, so you can kind of diagnose the problem. Huh, um, that's cool. Yeah, the other thing I was suggesting, that they that they do have a tool, though it's only on Windows, called, um, I think it's Turbo Boost Monitor. Um, and I was like, huh, let me see if that'll work. Unfortunately, I, I tried running it in parallels, and... Parallels virtualization um, apparently doesn't let that Intel program see um, the Turbo Boost feature because I guess oh, they virtualize the processor. Right, 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 right. They do for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because I thought that would be another one. Is like you know because that tool will let you see when Turbo Boost is switching on and switching off. So, yeah, um, interesting. So check out this tool if you. Uh, for whatever reason, if you uh, have concerns about uh, what Turbo Boost is doing to your machine. Cool. I, I don't, I, I'm just wondering if it somehow got disabled on our machine. I mean, I don't know how it would happen unless you ran this program, but. Right, right, you know. right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I like it. Hey, while we're at it on the cool stuff found here, John, you have you have another one. You, you found a, a health related item. Yeah, believe it or not. Um yeah, I think I picked it up. So they had a deal where if you went to Whole Foods and you bought like ten dollars worth of stuff, which uh, it, it, it's really hard to do that at uh, Whole Foods. <laughs> I thought that was just the cost of. I thought that was the cover charge, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, but at the point, I had a, a Prime membership, and uh, yeah, I think it was part of Prime. I got a Prime membership. For what did you get, Amex. John? Well, what I got, Dave, it was, I think it was during Prime Day. So I had some credit and it was Prime Day. So it was on sale. But I got something from, uh, how, how do you put it? Ufi? Ufi. Ufi. Or Ufi. Ufi, which is, which is for Anchor's brand. Yeah. Um, the Smart Scale P1. Nice. Okay. Um, and what does it do? Yeah. But, well, it came up um, pre-show. Um, you had, had uh, speculated that uh, I, I didn't have enough water. Um, or, and I, I got some water in front of me now, so yeah. hopefully everything's cool with that. But um, here's the neat thing about it. So not only is it a scale that shows your weight, but they have a smart app, um, which you run on iOS, and it will talk to the scale. And the thing is, not only does it measure your weight, but it measures like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different things. Huh. Um, or 13 things outside of your weight. So BMI, body fat, but water. And the thing is, yes, my water is low, according to this program. But muscle mass, bone mass, BMI, all sorts of things. And it also uh, integrates with health, which is, is kind of uh, so the oh, that's great. figures that it has that health knows about. It'll push them into the uh, the health app. Oh, that's freaking phone. awesome. So uh, and it's it's less than 50 bucks. It's like 45 bucks. Amazon Prime. Get it tomorrow. And with all the credits I have, I got it for, for way less. Yeah. I got it for like 20 something. Um, huh. So it, um, I mean, for the, for all the, all it does, I think it's pretty cool. I replaced, I, I had another scale that did something similar, but it didn't, it didn't measure nearly the, this number of uh, uh, parameters. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, and we got a question in the chat room. Um, it's Bluetooth. Um I see a little a little Bluetooth icon actually comes up on the display. Okay, so you didn't connect it to your Wi-Fi. You just this is just Bluetooth. that's not how it works. So you got to run, you run the app, um, okay. 
so you got to be you know within bluetooth range of the scale you run the app and then it sucks the data out of the uh and it looks like you can do like it's got like 16 users and all that that's pretty cool man huh yeah guess what i just ordered one there you go great I did. Yep. I had uh, I, I've, I don't think I've ever placed an Amazon order during the show, but they said it'd be here tomorrow if I uh, ordered within the next 26 minutes. So, you know, so I ordered within the next 26 minutes. I did it right now. That's pretty cool, man. Very cool. And Pete's back, which is good. Or Pete's almost back. Pete had a emergency. There you go. But that's OK. All good. It, it, uh, an urgency. I don't want to say an emergency. It's all good. So, He's here. He's back. All right. Cool. Uh, moving on our cool stuff found. I actually have three of them, uh, in, in a roundup that I have been doing, you know, this power delivery world that we live in is pretty darn cool. And honestly, you know, one of the coolest parts about it is how easy it makes it for us to have an external battery for our laptops. Now I know, I mean, today's Mac laptops run, you know, pretty I mean, they run like 10 hours or something, you know, under normal usage. So it doesn't take it, it. It's not normal that I'm like at the at the bottom. But to have a battery that could charge my phone, my iPad, my watch and or my laptop is a really nice thing to be able to carry with me. So I've found three and I've tested three. They all cost the same thing at Amazon. They're ninety nine ninety nine uh, as of the moment that we're doing this. So feature wise, uh I've tested the Anchor PowerCore Speed 20,000. I've tested the LifeProof Power Pack 20. And I've tested the MyCharge Portable Charger Power Bank Razor Extreme. Again, they're all $99.99 on Amazon or wherever you're going to get them. The, uh, the first two, the Anchor and the Life Active, are 20,000 milliamp hour batteries, as might be evidenced by their name. The my charge is actually a twenty six thousand eight hundred milliamp hour, so quite a bit more uh, in terms of of juice. The my charge is also different in that it has two USB A and one USB C port on it, whereas the other two only have one of each. So if you want one with two USB A ports, they all have a USB C port, and that is used for charging the power bank as well as output charge you know power to either your laptop or your phone or your ipad if you're charging via you know uh, a, a USB-C port the anchor uh weight wise i feel like the anchor is the lightest of these three and that can matter for sure uh it's got a nice little form factor it's it's not quite as bulky the life active one is really like the life proof one the, the brand is life active or their their sub brand is life active it it feels like life active, like this thing feels like it would it would suffer, uh, you know, quite a bit of impact to it. I wouldn't necessarily want to test impacting a lithium ion battery, folks, but they say it's waterproof, drop proof, dirt proof and snow proof. So that part's cool. The other part that's cool about the life proof one, John, is it has an, a series of or it has LEDs on the front of it. The LEDs can either be bright white, dim white or bright red. And red, you know, is really nice if you're needing a light, say, in a tent or even in a dark hotel room. Red doesn't tend to burn your eyes quite as much uh, when you are going from pitch black to not pitch black. Uh, So, like, I've used it in a hotel room when, uh, you know, I put it next to the bed. And if I need to get up and go pee in the middle of the night, I don't quite know the, you know, I don't have the, 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 the path. Yeah. And so I use the the little red thing and that lights up the room enough without, you know, like actually starting to wake me up. So, Pete, you say you use your watch for that? Yeah, there's a flashlight app yeah. in your watch. Yeah. Which is really cool. And there is a red one in there. Uh, nice. Which is uh, the advantage to that is it doesn't destroy your night vision. Right. So that, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, that, the red light. Yeah. yeah the red light doesn't destroy it. Yeah. So yeah. these. Or, so that one's pretty cool. Um and and they all work really well. I, I've tested them all either way and uh, handy little things. The the my charge one is a metal. It, it feels the form factor feels very Apple like it's it's that brushed, you know, aluminum or whatever it is. But uh, but, you know, they all work really well. And it, again, for a hundred bucks to have something that 
you know, would give your laptop quite a boost is a really handy thing to have. Uh, so there you go. So I share. John, you had a question. Oh, we're just just a comment. Is oh, that yeah. The red light would also come in handy if you're backstage. I remember this from my uh, stage days when they put red gels over the lights so you wouldn't annoy everybody. Got <laughs> it. Interesting. Interesting. You, you must run into that all the time. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, but see, that has changed. I, I much many lights backstage and in and on stage are um are leds now right so the oh, color right. colors are just built into them the colors change much faster than than gels that had to actually be you know manually rotate or mechanically rotated um mm. and they're way cooler right so not only does that mean they use less energy but they also cook you much less when you're you know under one mm. on stage that being said there leds are great there are times when incandescent lights are like they they def leds definitely don't look like incandescent lights in some scenarios you know so oh, and you don't pick them up on your uh, uh infrared night vision no on your HUD either. The, oh so, that's right yeah. oh pilot p yeah yeah just you know if you're flying into an airport at night and you've got incandescent lights you pick up the runway lights on your because they're IR. hot yeah yeah you're uh, the yeah. LED lights at a lot of airports are going to LED. It's like, of course, uh, that's it's not cheaper. helpful. So they're actually putting uh, heaters <sighs> in those lights so that you're. <laughs> so we're putting so LED lights out and then putting heaters yeah, in them well, so that they the show night, up. For when you need them. For nap. Yeah, for, yeah. yeah, for night. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Okay. But, so they don't use them all the time, just when needed. So but. Pete also found there's there's two of these. There's the the one I the my two of the my charges, uh, both yep. available at the same Amazon link. There's the twenty six thousand eight hundred milliamp hour with power delivery. Um, oh, this is the difference. It's the, slightly less. It's th there's 000. one, but it doesn't have power delivery. So there's another oh, one that doesn't sure have doesn't. power delivery okay. for seventy nine dollars. Yep. So be yep. careful. Although. It does like I'm not seeing it say power delivery anywhere here, but it does say that it will extend the life of your devices and lists. The first thing it lists is MacBook. So yeah. maybe it does. Yeah. It's an 18 watt output on this, which is yeah. the same as the other one. So, yeah, and maybe pa pass through charging. You can charge all at the same time. Yeah. If yeah. If you have access to a plug. Yeah. So. Yeah. So okay. So maybe. You, bucks, yeah. But. Maybe. Maybe this one would work. I haven't tested that one, so I can't say. Yeah. But, um, none but there you have, go. None of them yeah. have the Qi charge either, though. You set your phone on. Right. I do have one of those, too. That's all. That's handy to have yeah. Qi on a power bank. Yeah, like for that. sure. My charge has one of those. Yeah. I'll see if I can find the link for, for that, too. So. One thing we love here, and we love it because it, A, it, it allows you to give us some feedback, which is always good. Um, but, uh, but also allows, uh, things to be highlighted at, uh, at Apple is if you give us a review at Apple podcast reviews, because it really, it, I like, I'm not kidding when I say it makes a difference. They use that as their metrics to decide when and whether to highlight shows. And of course, highlighting a show means new listeners come in. That means more folks participating, more folks with questions, more folks with answers, right? Like this is a good thing. So it really helps if you haven't done a, a podcast review, an Apple podcast review for us, or haven't done one in a while, you can actually go and update your old review and that actually helps things rank. So if you've got one out there that you did, you know, maybe a year or 10 years ago, you can, when it was called iTunes reviews before they changed the name, go ahead and update it. Uh, and we've got a link for you that will get you as close as I can. You go to macgeekgabcom slash reviews, and then that will get you as close as we can link you to where you then go and, and leave us a review. But where is the show ranked these days? Yeah. You know? The, the, well, I mean, Mac we Camp. we have lots Ruffle. of five star reviews. It's great. No, I know what you, that. What are you asking? I, I gave you as many as I could. No, just like in the world, because uh, we have one at work that we had just started. We actually oh. broke the fifteen hundred with only an audience of five thousand. Nice. Uh, we broke fifteen hundred in the world. Oh, so in the I world. imagine the Mac oh, that's good. is way above I, that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I I, I haven't looked. Top, I gotta look. You gotta be in the top two hundred. I would say. I would hope so. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I got to look you, at that. Yeah. And All right. Stump, yeah. Well, in fact, we'll make it. A, we'll find out where it is. One of yeah. us will find out where it is. Maybe it'll be one of you. Maybe it's maybe it's one of us. There's and then name. and then we'll make it a goal to run that number up uh, together. Yeah. So for now, I just wanted to share one of our most recent reviews, which came from WIF five sixty seven, uh, and simply says, "I've been listening for years and have even asked a few questions. These guys are awesome. Dave and John have answered my questions and provided." countless tips and tricks 
If you use a Mac, iPhone, or other Apple device, you should give a listen. So thank you, WIF 567. That's pretty awesome. And uh, like I said, you can you can you can do it too. I will put I will put a link in the show notes because it's how I it's what we do. Reviews. MacGeekub.com slash reviews. There you go. That should get us there. If it doesn't, I will make sure it does. Because we have control over that. Where are we on time? We have time for a couple of these things, John. Are we ready? I'm gonna, sure. go, to, I'm gonna go to Kent, right? I didn't skip anything. I think we're doing all right. Kent writes. He says, my wife's 2011 MacBook Pro is finally and decisively bit in the dust. So we just placed an order for a new 27-inch iMac. The iMac has a multitude of ports, but FireWire isn't one of them. And she has an old but still very good UMAX PowerLook scanner, which uses a FireWire 400 interface. We've been using it with a 400 to 800 adapter cable, which is fine. And with my 2013 MacBook Pro, a FireWire to mini display port uh, Thunderbolt 2 adapter. Okay, great. So no problem. Uh, so now I'm looking for a connector to allow use on the new iMac, and I am confused as to what does and does not work offhand. It looks like the easiest solution is something that will take me from the adapter I've been using. OK, so FireWire 400 to 800 and then 800 to Thunderbolt 2. You are right that that is. So you've got Thunderbolt. You've got a Thunderbolt 2. You've essentially turned this into a Thunderbolt 2 scanner, right, with with all those adapters. So let's look at it from that standpoint. Uh, he says, uh, I've found, he says, I've found a couple of things on Amazon. One is only $16 and the other is $60 different, two different adapters. And he's like, I'm wondering why the price discrepancy here. Well, I'll explain. Um, it is definitely being informative. The price discrepancy, because the $16 one is not Thunderbolt. It goes mini display port. Right. It'll go Thunderbolt, you know, USB C to mini display port, even though Thunderbolt two and Thunderbolt one use mini display port as their connector. Not every mini display port is Thunderbolt two or Thunderbolt one capable. And this is the problem. The more expensive one does pass Thunderbolt data across that mini display port. And that's what you want. You could also if you're going with. A dock, there is an old version of the OWC Thunderbolt 3 dock that has a Thunderbolt 2 port on it. So that's another way to do it. There are some other docks that have Thunderbolt 2 ports. But I will tell you, I was using this for audio for a little while to get to FireWire audio from a USB, you know, from Thunderbolt 2. It it starts to get to be a little bit wonky. You may be totally fine with your scanner because that's sort of, you know, you use it and then it stops. You're not recording for hours like we are here. So just be aware uh, that, you know, I mean, I think you are aware that you're sort of, you know, Rube Goldberging, Rube Goldberging this solution together. And, uh, and you know, you may or may not. Kids, you can ask your parents who Rube was, but uh, you may or may not like the end result is what I will say. But it is doable. And I'm glad you actually found this adapter. I'm going to put a link to this in the show notes because these things are not easy to find these days. But this is a certified Cable Matters unidirectional Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter for 60 bucks. So that not a bad, uh, not a bad thing. So we will put that in the show notes. Any thoughts on this, Mr. Braun? Um, no, not really. I do have a... Uh... Thunderbolt to Thunderbolt cable. What? Who is it? Yeah, I was trying to do a, a I was trying to boot one, but you can, um, th- there is a Thunderbolt uh, target disk mode. I don't know if you knew that, but. Uh, on some Macs, not all, right? It, well, it's... at least the two that I have. Okay. Um, I think they, it is didn't possible. They, because... Didn't that go away? No, nah, it's still there. No, with, I was with, trying with newer, to. I mean, um... with newer Macs. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, but I got a very basic uh, Thunderbolt to Thunderbolt cable. Um, I know it worked. Uh, I, I was trying to mount the drive in one of my machines on another machine to apply some sort of uh, some sort of update to the SSD, and uh, it wasn't seeing it in in the Mac environment, or, or no, it was crashing in the Mac environment. So I'm like, oh well, let me let me try to mount it as a as a drive on the other machine, which it did work, and see if that works. And no, it didn't. Huh. Didn't see it, which it should have, but it didn't. Oh well. Huh. Interesting. 
Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Ken. That's uh, that's great stuff. While we are sort of on the Thunderbolt subject, we will go to Craig here who has a question. He says, I'm running out of USB ports, having a couple of drives, a Luna display, a keyboard, all connected to my iMac via an Elgato Thunderbolt 2 dock. The dock has two Thunderbolt 2 ports. One is going to the iMac. Can I connect another dock to get some more ports? I haven't been able to find out a definitive answer. If that dock truly has two Thunderbolt 2 ports and it's not just a display port, right, per our previous discussion in the last question, then, yeah, you can daisy chain them. I mean, it would be better if you I think your Mac has two Thunderbolt ports. So in theory, I, I would I would put the second dock on a port connected to your Mac. But, yeah, I mean, if it's a Thunderbolt 2 port, so it should offer Thunderbolt pass through. And and I'm pretty sure that that Elgato dock, it does have a have two true Thunderbolt 2 ports on it. So, yeah, I, I think you should be OK with that. I, I don't. I um I, I I've done that with I don't know that I've done it with the Elgato. I had that tested for a little while here. There was something about initially and I might be I'm misremembering, I'm sure the model, but there was something about the USB A ports not being full powered or something. But um but anyway, like yeah, the Thunderbolt stuff, I've 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 done that with daisy chaining Thunderbolt stuff and yes, it works. So you should be able to test it. But I think you're gonna be all right. And, and that is a good way to keep, you know, adding ports. So more, John, thoughts? More. More. All right. More ports. More ports. More ports is good. Ev the nerd wrote in and says, uh, I've been having the, uh, I've always enjoyed Apple's level of technical support and customer service. However, I've recently been having the worst experience with Apple that I've ever had it all started and he tells a story about purchasing a top of the line iMac and having all kinds of issues and basically having using Final Cut Pro uh, all Apple hardware, all Apple software, and it's not working well together properly. And it sounds like it might be a hardware problem. Um, and he said that he's been upgraded to tier two customer relations and uh, and was asking where to go from there if they need to escalate things. And, you know, I, I, is there somewhere else? And customer relations is usually the somewhere else. Um, sometimes, though, you need to be a little, um, I don't want to say forceful, but you need to be a little insistent with them and very clear. You can't beat around the bush and wait for them to suggest replacing your computer. Sometimes if it's, if that's the obvious and only solution, they will. Right. But if you wait for that, you may wind up with a non-optimal solution uh, when in fact that may have been an option. And so my advice is politely, but very firmly and clearly say, Hey, look, We've been through a lot here, as you know, you've seen this history or you've been a part of this, like what to whatever level the person that you're dealing with is, you know, is involved. Uh, we, as you can see, we've tried a lot of different things. None of them have worked. This is all Apple hardware and Apple software. So there's no third party to look at and, and consult here. At this point, it sure seems like a hardware problem. And because of that and because I don't want to waste any more of my time or your time, I would like to request a replacement computer be sent to me. And I think being very clear and, and explaining the support behind your request is, is how things need to be done. In fact, I remember being on the phone with customer relations and this was years ago. So like pre Angela Aaron's, perhaps even pre like retail storefronts. Um, and I remember the, the woman on the phone saying something where she was essentially prompting me to ask that question, it was clear that she could not be the one to offer it. But she did say, wait, I, I said something like, I think this thing just needs to be replaced. And she said, wait, are you asking for us to replace that, sir? And I said, yes, I am asking for you to replace this. And she said, OK, let me see if I can get that approved. It was very interesting, like the whole tone of the conversation changed. And, and it was as though she were waiting for me to be the one to to instigate that particular 
you know, exception process, if you will. She was not permitted to throw that into the ring. But as soon as she heard me, and it was an offhand remark. It was like, God, this really sucks. I just I feel like it just needs to be replaced. And it was like, aha, she could she finally had something she could hang her hat on wanting to do customer service. But also, of course, following, you know, towing the line of, of what she can and cannot do. And but if it was my idea, then she could she could run it up the flagpole. Uh, that may or may not still be the case there. But but I, I think you just need to ask. That's that's my advice. Ask politely because, you know, probably yeah. not the person's fault. The person you're talking to, it's probably not their fault that your computer isn't working. You know, they are the person there to help you. So be nice and all that good stuff. Yeah, I remember yeah. doing that. I had a back and forth. I think it was like a PowerBook G4 or something like that. Yeah. It, it was a older machine, but I was having an issue. And, you know, I had a, a, a guy assigned to the case and uh, I think we mailed it back and forth like four oh, times. Yeah. Because there was still a problem. And I think they actually created problems every time they sent it back to me. And I was like, you know, the next time I spoke to him, I'm like, you know, you, you know, first you're losing money on this because like you're paying all this overnight shipping and all that. And can we agree that if you don't fix it the fifth time around, I get a replacement machine? And he was like, yeah, that sounds reasonable. Yeah, right. <laughs> but that's it. But, but yeah, you had to throw that idea into the conversation and then they, they can take it and run with it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I would think their manager would would say that too but you know who knows and uh, actually this is interesting um uh, here's an interesting uh, uh, look another way to to address the problem uh brian monroe mentions this in the chat room apparently california has um a lemon law as uh, do i think many states uh, regarding vehicles um apparently it also applies to computers or uh, so an article i found he found uh huh. says interesting hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sure. It's it's worth. Yeah, yeah. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. It's worth reviewing that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I love it. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. All right. Let's um where are we here? Do we have Yeah, we have time for one more. Sure. Why not? Right? You got time for one more, John? I, I know sure. you I know you have a, a thing with your family this afternoon as do no, I. That's a couple hours. Yeah, oh, okay, can, good. Uh, Sweet. All right. So Daniel asks, he says so, for a home or small office, would you recommend a VPN to address concerns such as what I got from a recent client? We have been hearing about so, sir, we have been hearing so much about security and hackers and is uh, and, and a VPN is supposed to be a great additional layer of security. And then if so, which VPN brands or providers do you like? So, you know, it's a good question. Um, I, I will start with what I what I do, and I will give you uh, advice as to what I think other people should do. What I do is I don't run a VPN at my house. Like, you know, I, I, I don't run one 100 percent of the time. There are some routers that in fact, my router is one of them, the Synology routers, where you can have it connect to a VPN so that you, your entire network's worth of traffic is tunneled over a VPN. I'm not concerned about comcast or cable vision or you know time warner or any of those whoever whoever the the major isps are uh here in the u.s i'm ne really not concerned about them i know there are people that are concerned about comcast i feel like I, i'm i'm not maybe i should if, if, if that's if if, I, if i'm wrong that's on me uh, i mean i think most of the traffic is is encrypted anyways right SSL or TLS, whatever you want. Most, but like your your DNS probably isn't. Synology just added DNS over HTTPS to their routers. So now my <sighs> DNS traffic is, uh -huh. right? But, you know, your ISP, generally speaking, you're using your ISP for DNS. And even if you're not, DNS traffic by default is not encrypted. So you can see what domains you're you're looking for. But you're right. Other than DNS, most of what you're doing is encrypted. But... I can see if I'm your ISP, I can see that you have an encrypted connection to Apple.com or an encrypted connection to Amazon.com. I can't see what's going mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. the connection, but I can see even if you're using DNS over HTTPS, like so encrypted DNS, I can still see that you're connecting to a server that belongs to Amazon or that belongs to Apple or that belongs to something that maybe, you know, someone doesn't want someone to know. So it, I don't. I don't have uh, enough of an issue to to impose that upon myself. And and there are some costs that come with running a VPN for your entire network. And those costs might be speed, right? If your VPN provider's connection 
is slower than your home or office connection, then you, you are you are subject to whatever that limitation is. It's also potentially, potentially going to slow things down. It's going to make it very difficult for you to host any servers or inbound connections. If you're doing any kind of thing, like a VoIP connection might be weird or it might not. I mean, I proved that when I was in Orlando, I accidentally had left ExpressVPN running during our Mac Geekab recording. And obviously it all went just fine. No problem. So who knows? But yeah, um, so I wouldn't do it there, but I, I would recommend if there is anything in particular that they are concerned about keeping to themselves that they that they have a VPN that maybe they can employ on their individual computers. Uh, you know, I know uh, that, you know, ExpressVPN is a sponsor of Mac Geek Cab. I did not I had not used ExpressVPN until about a year ago when they started to come on board as a sponsor. Uh, they very quickly became my favorite VPN and I've tested lots of them. The fact that they're a sponsor is the reason I tested them, but it is not the reason that they are my favorite. They are my favorite because it is super, super simple and it works and it's really good at getting around any problems that might exist with blocks or anything like that. So and obviously it worked really well to record Mac Geekab. So ExpressVPN truly is my favorite. The good news is because they are an ongoing sponsor, expressvpn.com slash MGG gets you some kind of a deal. I think you get like an extra three months or something like that, but I'll put that link in the show notes. They're not a sponsor of this episode, but, um, but throwing it in there. Yes, Mr. Pete, so pilot Pete. I've got a question. Yeah. Let's say one of the listeners is uh, at work and joins a Wi-Fi network yes. at their place of work and then is uh, asked to accept a certificate. Yep. Now, now, encrypted or not, that can be seen across. Everything that's done can be seen across, right? Um, Once you accept the certificate, aren't you opening? You are joining, not necessarily. Okay. No, if you then launch a VPN connection, they can see that you're connected to a VPN, but that's it. Okay. They're not. They're not running. If they're running software on your computer, a certificate is not in this. Right. In this. In this realm, I would not call a certificate software. I mean, it could be yeah. argued that it is, but um, but, but it I is. I thought it was opening up the encryption to that to that Wi Fi, therefore it allowing would. whatever on your computer to be. It it, it would it would okay. it would open up. It, yes, the certificate is just a different way of authenticating and encrypting onto that Wi Fi network. Right. Um, but whatever you do on there. It certainly is seen if you're not doing anything to obscure that. But if you were to say connect to ExpressVPN, then 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 it, then it encrypts back again. Okay. Correct. Ah, cool. Correct. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's tunneled within a tunnel, essentially. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, thoughts, uh, Mr. That's Brown? interesting, Pete, that you bring that up because um, I just saw a story going around here. Um, apparently, many uh, big companies are blocking a certificate from the government of Kazakhstan mm -hmm. because they said citizens please install a certificate so we can watch what you're doing yeah and uh apparently uh a lot of companies feel that that's not legit so oh interesting well, i knew uh there's actually a guy in uh one of, one of our pilots over in germany but apparently it's a scam going around he got a he got a fine of a thousand dollars ostensibly from the from the german government for downloading some uh TV shows or movies he shouldn't have downloaded. Yeah, and, but that was wow. a big scam. But, uh, but yeah, there were there are others who are questioning how much can in fact be seen once they install the certificate in order to join the corporate Wi-Fi. Fascinating. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I had that same question too. I couldn't answer it. I was yeah. like, oh, I think you're allowing some encryption to be visible. But yeah, that I makes mean, it, I see what you're saying. Now. Yeah, and incredible. there's a difference between a certificate and a profile too. I mean, a profile sure. usually does contain a certificate. But if it, but a profile can also like give them the ability to do things to your Mac, like, right. you know, turn it off or shut it down or wipe it right. remotely, which, which is what they do, in fact, accomplish when they they issue us sure. iPads and they've got a tight rein on those because they're theirs. And, and, well, one, they're theirs and two, for good reason. I mean, the you, you are relying on those. For, say, that's for your flight manual navigation yeah. for yeah your flight manual navigation, uh, you know, your charts. Uh, they don't, the FAA doesn't want those corrupted. 
I, so they I, have a nice... as, as someone who <laughs> uh, far more often than than maybe he likes lately has been a passenger on planes. Yeah. I'm 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 good with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't absolutely. need Angry Birds messing up the no. flight manual, man. No. Yep, it's good. All right. Well, with that, I think it's time. We must. It all good things must come to an end. You know, as it goes. Visit us on Instagram, MacGeekUp.com. Oh, I guess I, it would just be Instagram.com slash MacGeekUp. But I'll put a redirect in. I said we can do redirects for anything, so I'll do one for this. It'll be Instagram or MacGeekUp.com slash Instagram. Whichever way you do it, it will work. Just for those of you in the chat room, not right at this moment because I'm, I'm doing a thing. But I will get that straightened out very, 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 quick, very quickly. But join us over there. It's, uh, you know, it's good. It's fun. It's yet another yet another place where we can be in touch. John, you already mentioned the forums, which is awesome. If you want to send us an email, you send it to feedback at MacGeekGab.com. I don't know if I heard you right, Dave. Um, I'm not sure if you said feedback at MacGeekGab.com. What, what do you think, Dave? I heard feedback at MacGeekGab.com. I think that's right. I think you guys got it right. So thank you for the clarification, gentlemen. This Not is, feedback. Well, Sorry. or that. Yeah. You could send a feedback if you have to. Because <laughs> listener Michael years ago wanted wanted that, and we were happy to oblige. I want to thank Cashfly, C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com for sponsoring, or for, well, for sponsoring the show, but also for um, for providing all the bandwidth to get the show from us to you. I want to thank you, Pilot Pete, for uh, making room in your schedule to come see us oh, for special 777 today. I'm thrilled, thrilled to yeah. actually be able to be here. I, I, it's so rare I get actually time to come to I know. the session. Well, you are welcome yeah. anytime, thank not you. just on yeah. the ones that are named after airplanes or oh, numbered after there airplanes. There you go. Oh, yeah. Too busy. Yeah. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. I, I, yes, I, I get it. John, thank you for, uh, for, for being you. And, you know, all of this. This is good. It's good. Right? No? Okay. Sure. All right, good. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Uh, thanks to all our sponsors. As I mentioned during the show, we have Linode at linode.com slash MGG. And, of course, smile at textexpander.com slash podcast. Of course, Otherworld Computing at maxsales.com. Barebones Software at barebones.com. Eero at Eero.com slash MGG. As I mentioned, ExpressVPN.com slash MGG. We mentioned Experian in the show. Check that out, too, because you can go to Experian.com slash MGG and get, actually help increase your credit rating. It's actually pretty cool. Whatever you're doing, though, go freeze your credit because we want to make sure. What, what do we want to make sure, Pete? What are we doing here? Well, whatever you do, don't get caught. made up.